Tomo News presents exotic food. Indonesian supermarket peddles python meat. Looking to add some variety to your home cooked meals? Ever considered python? An Instagram photo of python meat being sold at a supermarket chain in Manadao, North Sulawesi province has gone viral. A local Indonesian animal welfare organization denounced the sale of such meat, accusing the supermarket chain of directly legalizing the exploitation of protected animals. However, the type of snake meat being sold in the photo isn't actually a protected or endangered animal. This particular python, or as locals call it, patola, is a species commonly found in bushes or rice fields. There are three types of snakes that are protected in Indonesia, but those are the green sangka, the sangka bodo, and the sangka timor. The sale of patola python is not uncommon in the region, and they have a more extreme market where exotic animal flesh can also be purchased. Dishes including the meat of dogs, rats, and snakes are often consumed, and the supermarket says the only reason they sell snake meat is because it's a local delicacy. Manadao residents request snake meat to purchase so they can cook it at home, and the head of the store stood by their decision, telling local media the sale is legal. One resident had no problem with a slithery dinner, telling one and all that snake meat tastes better than chicken. Huh, who knew? And of course, there's the old question, right? If these pythons aren't rare or protected, are eating them any worse than eating a chicken or a cow? Um, maybe not, but we're sticking with the chicken. You? A bit of python? Okay, then. Frozen raccoon for sale at L.A. Supermarket. A grocery store in a Los Angeles suburb area has been making headlines after a video surfaced showing the store selling frozen raccoons. Christina Dow was shopping at Metro Supermarket in Temple City on Monday. That was where she saw something that made her jaw drop. Frozen whole raccoons with bloody fur packaged in plastic bags. They were selling for $9.99 a pound, with one particular raccoon going for $54.35. Dow filmed her shocking discovery with her cell phone. She also found alligator feet next to the raccoons. She quickly got out of the supermarket while still filming, making sure her video shows the name of the store. She then uploaded the video to social media and reported the shop to the Los Angeles County Health Department. A supermarket employee told CBS Los Angeles that raccoons, which don't exist in wild China, are considered a Chinese delicacy for certain dishes. But is it legal to sell raccoon meat in California? The answer is yes, as long as the origins of the meat are officially approved. The supermarket has since stopped selling raccoons until it gets approval. Hornet Mooncake introduced at this year's Mid-Autumn Festival in Taiwan. These are some yummy traditional mooncakes for the upcoming Mid-Autumn Festival on September 8th. Here's an innovative treat. It's a mooncake with a hornet placed on top of it. And there's more for those hungry for hornets. The cake's filling contains hornet larvae. The pastry shop owner said Hornet Mooncake is crispy and the sweet and sour hornet larvae has a nice taste after it's baked. The idea for the hornet cake came from a third-generation pastry shop owner, Su Li Ji, who also works as a volunteer fireman, where he removes a lot of hornet hives. According to Taiwanese remedies, bee larvae can prevent aging and revitalize skin. Su thought it might be a good idea to use it as an ingredient in mooncakes. Taiwan Apple Daily's bold reporter decided to give it a try. The hornet tasted like crispy fried shrimp. The larvae tasted just like red bean paste. It's also got a taste of liquor and fruit. Sue explained that after the larvae were cooked, they were soaked in rum. It actually tastes quite good. If you don't know what it's made of, you won't taste any difference. One Hornet Mooncake costs about three US dollars. Only 2,000 will be available for sale. Are you daring enough to try one? Trivialist presents 10 disgusting food ingredients you eat daily. Man, I'm hungry. What will I have today? Uh, perhaps I'll have some breast implant filler and some duck feathers with a bit of beaver butt juice. Oh, and ammonia on the side. What, you think I'm weird? Those are all standard ingredients in a hamburger, chicken nuggets, and frosty shake combo. So put down your fish bladder beverage and listen up, because this is 10 disgusting food ingredients you eat daily. First up on our list, it's beaver anus. Well, not exactly the anus itself, but the beaver's anal secretion, known as castorium. Castorium has been used in people food for over 80 years. 
But what's it good for other than helping beavers mark their territory, right? Castorium has a very strong vanilla flavor, and a little goes a long way. When there's no Madagascar vanilla beans to be had, you better bet beaver butts are coming to the rescue. To milk or obtain the castorium, the beaver herder must sedate the animal, then squeeze a nipple next to its butthole to squirt out the thick castor juice. Now, it looks nasty, but it smells freaking amazing. If you've ever had any vanilla-flavored products, you won't see beaver anus listed on the package, because in the U.S., we just call it natural flavoring. Yum! Number two, human hair. Our second unappetizing additive comes from possibly the most disgusting place on Earth, your body. That's right, it's human hair. If you've been eating factory-made bread, cakes, bagels, or meats, then you've had a healthy helping of human hair. That's because human hair is the richest source of L-cysteine available on Earth, up to 20% by weight. And L-cysteine makes bread bouncy, meats tasty, and even helps your cigarettes take you to flavor country. Now that you know you've been eating hair, you're probably thinking, whose hair? Why, it's Indian hair, of course. So think of Calcutta next time you crunch on a croissant. Number three, silicone breast filler. Our third bizarre ingredient is found in Chicken McNuggets, and uh, many other places too. In fact, it could be right in front of you right now, but <laughs> that depends on whether you've got uh, breast implants. It's polydimethylsiloxylane, or PDMS for short. PDMS is useful because it's inert, and it's bouncy, two qualities that make it great for big fake boobies and chicken nuggets. If you're having trouble visualizing PDMS, just think of Silly Putty. Oh, and it's the main ingredient in that, too. So the next time you're sitting down for a 12-piece, just look at those deep-fried, mechanically-shaped, chemically-injected hunks of pulverized chicken and think, them some big old biddies. Number four, Carmen Beetles. Coming in at number four, it's red number four. And when you find out where it's made from, you'll be seeing red, too. Also known as Carmen. This ubiquitous food coloring and fabric dye have a long history going all the way back to the Aztecs. In fact, it's so common that most of your red clothes are probably crawling with Carmen. Also, they could be crawling because Carmen is made from bugs. That's right. To get one pound of Carmen dye, you need to harvest 75,000 cochineal bugs. When dissolved in acid, these little critters make a red dye that is long-lasting, flavorless, and mostly safe. Now, you might ask, is harvesting millions of bugs really the easiest way to get red coloring? And the answer is no. But it turns out all the other ways give you cancer, so, hmm. So, next time you're chowing down on a red velvet cake, remember that velvet really means bugs. Number five, bug glaze. Coming in at number five is an ingredient that'll give you a real shellacking. That's because it is shellac. Wait, isn't shellac the shiny stuff you smear on wood furniture? Yes, it is. And it turns out you can eat it, too. Shellac is good for candies that have a shiny coating on the outside, like jelly beans, or for pills with a time-release coating. But if you're only a little unsettled by the idea of eating shellac, then allow me to make it worse. It turns out shellac comes from the lac bug, which, wouldn't you know it, is a cousin of number four, Carmen. The lac bugs spend their days crawling around on trees and pooping huge quantities of shellac everywhere they go. Then you just crack that off, melt it down, and it's pretty much ready for Jelly Belly. Mm hmm. Number six on our list is not a bug, and it is not pooped out of a bug, I promise. But if you get too much of it in your shorts, you'll chafe like you've got fire ants. It's sand, or as it says on the box, silicon dioxide. It's funny that food today contains so many chemicals with long names that seeing silicon dioxide in the ingredients wouldn't even faze most people. But if I asked you whether you'd like some sand with your soup, you'd probably say, uh, no. So why on earth would anyone want to eat sand? Well, it keeps things from clumping. So you'll find it in coffee creamer, canned soup, and most insidiously of all, salt. Number seven, fish bladder. Well, you're probably not thrilled by the idea of eating sand, but it could be worse, right? Then you won't mind number seven on our list. It's fish. Well, more precisely, the bladder of the fish. Okay, that's not so bad. I eat fish. And this isn't like a pee-pee bladder. It's just to keep the fish floating. So why not? Bring on the fish bladder. I'm glad you feel that way, because fish bladder is a really common ingredient in all your favorite beers. 
called isinglass when you dry it out. Fish bladder is used in thick beers like Guinness to make them less cloudy. So when the barmaid asks if you want another round, say two isinglasses, please. Number eight, paper. I gotta tell you, I'm really proud of how mature you're being about all these weird ingredients. Some people probably wouldn't take it too well if I told them their favorite Parmesan cheese contained sawdust. And I am telling you that. Your favorite shredded Parmesan cheese contains sawdust. What a champ, you took that really well. Okay, here's how it works. It starts out as wood pulp or cotton, but when you refine that stuff down, you get cellulose. Cellulose is what keeps that pre-shredded taco cheese from sticking together. But don't worry, cellulose is not only harmless, it's also indigestible. So once that cheese clump clears your track, you can tell the cellulose, sell you later, sucker. Yeah, sorry about that. Number nine, viruses. Number nine on our list is gonna sound bad instantly, but don't get too worked up, okay? You've got a virus. Actually, you've got six viruses, and they were given to you on purpose. The viruses I'm talking about were sprayed onto your deli meats in order to kill bacteria. The bacteria they're killing used to kill several thousand people a year in the U.S. Now, thanks to these viruses, called bacteriophages, the bacteria is not killing anybody. Let's just hope these viruses never mutate and become deadly themselves. Viruses never do that, right? Our number 10 unhappy ingredient will be familiar to anybody who's ever cleaned a floor, taken a pee, or engaged in chemical warfare. It's your friendly household ammonia. Ammonia gas can be deadly to living things, which is why they spray it on dead ground beef. The beef, or pink slime as it's affectionately called, is often riddled with bacteria. Spraying ammonia and some viruses on there kills the bacteria. But don't spray too much or your hamburger will smell like floor cleaner. Well, that's all the gross ingredients we got time for today, but there's a lot more where that came from. So after you've gotten over your fear of food, be sure to come back for some more disgusting trivia.